Well, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Trap Lines and Inlines. It's an absolutely gorgeous morning here on site. We're getting up here first thing this morning. It's just a beautiful day to do something deadly, let me tell you. And we are building a deadly home and we are doing it right now. All of the hard work that I've spent the last month, month and a half in, in designing and planning and going over everything is pretty well over. I feel like a bear emerging out of a den. We got logs piled up here for days. We got a couple hundred hours into getting all these logs out at least. And now it's finally time to get site set up here and start stacking logs. Let's not waste any time. This is a gorgeous log. It's one that's gonna go 46 foot on the bottom of my house. It's huge. I'd take them all like this. I probably got 15 like this. Absolutely gorgeous trees. Let's get to work. So I like peeling logs and to be honest, I've never actually found it to be all that hard of work. That was until I came out here and tried to do this in 20 below and realized that this is most definitely hard work. I realized right away that I needed to do it in warmer weather. Here it's about minus 10 and I'm having a lot better luck with it, but still it's frozen on there solid and the wood is like glass and it's much harder, but we're just trying to peel the couple logs that we need to get started on building here. There's few things in my life that bring me as much joy as chainsaws do. Like there's maybe five things I really love and chainsaws are like half of them at this point. Like I just have so much fun running them. But I've only ever ran, you know, small chainsaws because uh, I don't have huge trees in it. But you've seen me cut through a lot of big trees when I was getting all these brought in. With my 20 inch 261, I had to cut her from both sides. So I have been needing a bigger saw to get through big trees. And now that we're doing this log building, I was just looking at a big saw to rip. Because you see this big log here, we got to cut it right in half for the bottom and the top and a lot of things like this. We need to do some ripping that we don't want to do with a little saw. We need a big saw. <laughs> okay guys, a brigadier log, I ain't even, look at this. Okay friends, I can't even stop smiling all day about this. Now, I got her inside, she's warming up. Um, this is a 661, it's 90cc with the 33 foot bar on it. I've never even come close to running a chainsaw with it like this size. This is a beautiful chainsaw with one hell of a story behind it. This is the first time I've ever started it and she's ported. It's just gonna be loud. <laughs> I never even started a saw this big before. So I'm just gonna start it on the ground. I usually don't, but yeah, there we go. Oh. 
ain't even coming close to doing this so I adjust this on the what I got around here. I don't want to tear up my stands too bad the way. A lot of these logs like this one got um, mud on the bark so I don't want to chew into them because this chain is beautiful sharp. So I've been looking at this very soft for a while because I wanted one I could rip with but still have a practical use for for trees that were bigger than my 261. Right at that exact same time if I told you that a viewer of the channel sent me this chainsaw, would you believe me? Because I, I wouldn't even believe me. I can hardly believe it myself and here it is right in front of me. This is about the nicest gift I've ever received probably in my entire life. And uh, the whole thing has been a very humbling process. Like, I don't even know how to put this into words. But the fact that someone who doesn't even know me who just who watches my videos but has never met me is do something this generous that's this important uh to me like i can't even uh, it's like unfathomable to me and it's been really humbling here and i can't thank you kenny enough for this chainsaw it's something i really needed you know to mill these flat and something i was really gonna put to good work and had a lot of use for and I could hardly believe it. I still can hardly believe it. And the whole thing, guys, is just so uh, humbling. The, uh, a couple things have happened here lately that have really got me on this thought of this thing is just so much bigger than, than I am now. Like, it's not even funny. Like, I'm one person, and I get to have a lot of fun with this YouTube channel, you know, because I, I get to do it every day and spend the most time at it and with what I'm doing. The reality of it is now, there's 64,000 people here and it's immeasurable. It's, it's so far above me at this point. It's, it's unbelievable. I cannot, I'm, I've been staring at this saw, like when it first came in the mail, I'm like, holy fuck, I can't believe this. Like somebody sent me this out of the blue. This has all been so humbling to me and all I can feel from this and, and, and interacting with you guys all the time who are so good to me, it's not even funny. All, it, all I feel is a much bigger purpose for this YouTube channel and it gives me so much more motivation when it's for a lot more than just me, you know? It, it's really awesome. Uh, guys, I can't thank you enough. I, 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 I'm at a loss for words here. So we got a lot of snow up north here friends as you can see and we're trying to place our first logs on stumps here like we're trying to get them set on our temporary foundation. Now to do that I want them sitting right on the ground I don't want all the snow in between the stumps and, and the ground so we're going to plow it out and try and scrape it right to the ground and then that way we don't have to walk through it the whole time while we're building too eh. You know, friends, I never actually found peeling logs to be that all that hard of work till I come out here in 20 below and beat my draw knife off. <laughs> I got these ones peeled and what an effort it was, but we're getting her done. <laughs> So, we got to take our big chainsaw and rip through them big logs and make them flat. I need a special tool to do that and I could spend $140 and wait three weeks on the shipping or I can just can take a couple extra pieces of steel. So 
So this is a helper handle I'm building here and I built it for nothing and in, in quick time. So if you want to learn how to build a helper handle, here's a quick crude one that would have worked deadly. The only damn thing is I never ended up using it and you'll see here shortly. Deadly. Beauty day. These are my half cells. Two of them at least. Possibly the third we'll see. Here's the grain on this one. The amount of calculation that goes in to make sure you're using the right logs at these particular stages and saving the right ones and the grain of them, immense. But that's also boring. You know what's not boring? They're on a chainsaw, so we'll just do that. These little trees feel a hell of a lot nicer than the bigger ones. It's like a totally different kind of bark. I got some here that are just Jesus big old ones. And I have to do it on really a warm day. Otherwise it's just hell. Hours and hours to do a log. Well guys, couldn't ask for a nicer morning than today. You know, I get to come out here and work with big timber and big chainsaws. Like there's literally nothing I'd rather be doing. It's, it's awesome. We are making sill logs and what a treat this big saw is for this job. And actually, if you look, this is really quite, quite decent. Now we just come through and flatten it here. Throw more chalk at her. So you can see these are my cut lines now and I just follow that and stay above it with my chainsaw. I just try and stay close to the line and make sure I just stay above it because I can knock the wood off pretty easy but if I gotta... So that's my half sill. And that uh, was the best one I've done. See this... It... For freehand and a rip cut, I'm pretty damn proud of this. You see we got high spots, they're easy to fix. We just gotta make sure we don't have any damn low spots. Fuck, that looks good. You see there's these ridges, you know, from having to twist and stay on that line. Kept her above the line, that's beautiful man, looking real good. Okay, 
So the next step is brushing it with this saw and you see it's a rough surface, but I take out all the high spots and get it leveled off pretty damn nice. You can see the difference going from that to this wavy shit. If you can see the difference. So you can see I'm high there and I'm high there, you know, and what I'm trying to do here with the chainsaw is take the wood off the high areas and then start to blend it in with the low area, which you can see here just kind of to the middle of the screen. It's actually the worst part of the slab. And when I first started cutting it, there was a lot more blending and flattening to do than when by the time I had the last one, I cut, was able to cut it a lot better. Spent a lot less time doing that, so that's the beautiful progression of things. And uh, all the same, they're all beautiful flat. The only thing is how long it took me to do the first few. <laughs> In about 20 minutes of doing that, I have this thing damn flat. Like, now here, check it out. I got this here new tool. I got it for Christmas and I'm pretty damn happy about it. Always needed a planer. A really super wide one would be ideal for this, but I bought, I got this one, it's not as expensive and it's been working real damn good and it's, uh, you can see here how we're going to tune it up. Taking it a step further, it'd probably be fine to just take this half log, set it on the sill, set it on the foundation with the gasket and it'll seal right up, no problem. But it ain't ever going to be too flat, so we're taking it an extra step. It's going deadly. Well friends, it's an absolutely beautiful day here. We're getting started here right away, skinning this big heifer. She's a beauty. Look how damn straight this big log is. It's going on the bottom. We gotta cut it too. And it's gonna go over top of the logs we just cut. I got lucky with the weather today. If it's below zero, it's deadly. You should have seen how I peeled these big suckers when it was fucking, when it was minus 10, holy shit. It was not that much fun. But you know, I still got her done anyway. I actually love doing this. Okay, so we got this big Jesus log peeled here. Pretty good time. Now let's move some snow so we can set these logs and start building. Man, is this exciting. I cut this big log here because it was too crooked to use in one piece, but I wanted to use it here. And there's also going to be a big patio door in the front. Otherwise, it would have been easier just to do it in one piece. <laughs> First log, boys, let's get her done.
Be damned if this thing doesn't make my day every day. I don't know about you guys, but I like to listen to tunes, you know, just feel great about the day I'm doing what I love, I'm pumped up, I'm listening to tunes that pump me up. <laughs> Shit. So you see me wearing these all the time, it's because they're these ones that got the tunes going to them too. So they're pretty deadly. <laughs> Well, it's a beautiful day here today. The sun's popping out and I kind of hope it was hoping it would stay overcast here. And here's why. I did something here pretty big and I think I'm about the last person to join here. I don't actually own anything in Milwaukee, any tools, I guess. I heard it's a slippery slope too. <laughs> now, here's the deal. This is one of those things I felt like I needed to buy once do it once and hopefully never really have to do it again. Now what we got here, my friend, the best green laser that Milwaukee makes. And here's why. I'm building a house. Every goddamn thing's gotta be plumb square, 90 degrees, everything. So I bought this three plane laser. This is the best one, it was not cheap. And my reason behind it is I wanna buy something that saves me a lot of time and saves me a lot of time every time I fire it up. I had bought a cheap laser, a $90 one, that I plan to use for basic shit. Quickly realized that I fucked up because it's one of those things. It's such an awesome tool. I need a really powerful laser to use it outside here to level off all this stuff. This one's three plane, it's deadly. So not only, oh fuck, not only does it shoot lasers this way, but this way and this way. So I can do 360 degrees, I can do 90 degrees, plumb. One of those things, hopefully a good investment. Let's set it up here and get this building squared so we can notch, notch some damn logs. What a time it is. My line shows up right here, it's probably hard to see. Shooting straight across. So I got three and three quarters from the line to that, that sill and then the same on this sill.
Well, I got the first log. So I think it's, I can finally start to show you that I'm not fucking around here. Like it's not a little cabin, it's a house. And it's a simple rectangular, but it's got six corners, okay? Now, this part is tricky and I've been spending a lot of time at this stage. And I think I've probably been overdoing it, but there's a lot of things going down on here for when we scribe this first log onto the logs below. And it's really quite tricky because every single log has to be level. And what's tricky here now that we're gonna do is see this log here is not level. It's sloping down because there's more that needs to be notched off the butt than there is at the tip. Well, we can't just come and notch these. We have to level this log off and notch out a certain amount to get it level so that when we bring this fucking thing down, it's gonna be perfectly level on the bottom and connect everything. It's really tricky. Scribers are out for the first time today on this one and that's an exciting thing, friends. It is. So I'm just rough notching these. Meaning it's a long ways from perfect. I'm giving it a little extra. Now this log, log is so long, eh? It's 46, 48 foot. Now it's straight like this. It's so heavy here in the center, it's sagging. So my perfectly flat surface on the bottom, it's probably sagging enough that these these ends here are actually so i wonder if i should even we'll see we need these to be perfectly flat that's how much wood i'm removing deadly really deadly now all that we got left is the really fun part of making sure 152 different measurements and planes and levels all line up at once before I final scribe this thing down to where it needs to go well it's minus 25 and we're out here log building <laughs> you know one of those things I've been out here doing this wrong for too goddamn long too. I did, haven't done this how I should have. I've got enough shims holding this thing down perfect level. I've done so many things wrong and pissed away right, waste so much time trying to get this centered. Because once I put this scribe in on this big log, a lot is kind of set in place. Like I ain't gonna be able to twist that log level once it's perfectly scribe fed. I'm trying to get this log level now. So what I did was I notched it down and I knew I wouldn't get it exactly. You can see here I got, you know, six inches. And that's because I, that's what I got this down to. Don't mind all my shims. 
you know, I got about six inches to scribe this down. But you remember what I was saying, friends. This thing is just about sagging two inches in the center here, but not for long. Just from sitting here, getting cold while I was working, jeez, you fucking. Have to be careful with this wood today. It's so cold, it's kind of fragile. See? So I gotta be careful. I always score this, because if I score it so that it's a touch of an angle, it'll break away to that side. But if I have this on, well, that was too steep of an angle. But if I have this too much the wrong way, it'll split where I want my beautiful notch, so. Having a deadly day. Well, what can I tell you, friends? Log building is hard, being deadly is hard. Anyway, we're enjoying it, just trying to get it done, battling through some tough shit here we gotta figure out. A lot of head scratching. See, the logs I choose to use, you know, that's very important. I got, and I actually might be making this a little, well, I definitely am making it a little bit hard on myself because I'm using these logs really in their utmost potential and really stretching them out. So you can see, I got a 46 foot log there that's gotta go on my long walls. That's fucking huge. It's much harder to line those up, to f find them straight, to everything is harder when they're that long. I need this other one for my sill log, right? Like, you see, like this one here is just is just an absolute beauty. Like you couldn't ask for a better log for this job because it's perfectly straight, it's good diameter. You know, it just worked out perfect, so that made it easy on me. But I really need a lot of things on the sill logs to be perfect. They have to meet a lot of criteria. Now, here's the thing. I only have a few logs that can actually span this distance straight. I got a few that are crooked. I got a few that are absolute beauties though that I gotta save, like that one I gotta save for the roof. I got a perfectly straight one over there that would just do it dandy, but it's straight grained and it has to go above the windows. I only had three logs to choose from and they all had some kind of sweeper. I've had to ponder this and ponder this for hours. Finally, I've twisted this logs probably a hundred times trying to figure out where I want to cut this flat so that I can have the right shoulder height. Man, I'm just happy to get it done. Let's do it. You know it's time to party when we put in two sets of earplugs though. <laughs> Ended up slabbing a little more than I wanted to off of this for being a three quarter sail, but I had to do that mainly just in this spot here because 
of the bend in the log. It's got a bit of a twist there that I fought for hours. <laughs> So because I cut a little bit more off that other big sill, I said, well, in a perfect world, it would be, you know, perfect to cut about an inch and a half off this mid-span log corner so that my notch is not too deep into the big, big log there. So then I got to thinking, and then I said, well, in a perfect world, I probably got a 661 still. And look at how quick I just hooked up the chainsaw mill to this and it absolutely sliced through this thing like butter. Like I was done two minutes. This is like a 15 inch slab. And I haven't even put a new chain or sharpened this chain all this milling that I've done. And it's still flying through it. about here I'm looking at only about ten and a half literally on the dot looking for fifty and a half feet So you see the tip of this log is sitting on five inches and we want this to be sitting five inches from the bottom of this one too. So we'll calculate that amount and then make sure we have enough moved out that it's not gonna hang up in the center. Quick and efficient. Ooh, fucking around. So, in all the chaos of learning all these new things and all the trouble of getting started and making sure I don't bugger up, I'm sure glad that I already taught myself how to do all this notching stuff. Not only that, I find it to be so much fun, so it really is a treat. <laughs> Well friends, 
putting that other log there, it's sure starting to feel like a house. It really closes it off and makes it feel a whole nother kind of way. It looks silly though, it's sagging quite bad in the center. And then it actually has a bit of a dip to it anyway where this one, look how beautiful that log is. This camera won't do it justice either. It's a Jesus big tree. This is a fucking deadly day, fucking deadly day. Yeah, she's ready to go on here now. I did leave a little block in this one here too, just to strengthen it up. See, one of the things I did here, like this is the front of my house, hey? There's gonna be a lot of curb appeal. Um, now, I put these big half sills because I didn't want small half sills and I kind of want to get the even levels uh, close to level, the even rounds. So meaning a lot of taper on this first cut, the second log close to level, not far off for our windows and shit. There's so much into this. Can't even tell you. Now, in doing so, my logs have not very big tips. It would be easier if I had bigger tips. That's not what we're doing. Anyway, so that means that I got to only have a small amount because the tip comes over next. I can't have a whole shitload of wood there. Or I won't be able to cross it. These half sills so steep, uh, so big, my saddles are really steep and that made it really tricky to notch, made it really tricky to profile so I wouldn't have recurve. Cause my notch has to be like this, so it'll come and slide down. I can't have a notch that like hooks down in the bottom. It won't even fit. So really tricky, but I got this big sexy log here and it's, it's really adds a lot of character, a lot of mass to the front. Like in this instance, Instead of weakening the shit out of the top log by cutting so much out of it, I leave that block of wood in there, which is not ideal. This is not efficient. This is not a good selection thing. We'll see what happens as we move up, but I am able to make it really strong this way. Hey, like this is so fucking strong. Like you would need so many 
a lot of horsepower and probably the old 12 valve couldn't even have pulled that apart you know fuck <laughs> The truth is, friends, I would not do these half sails the same. They look good. They look big and strong. But what I thought I was gaining, I didn't really gain. And that steep and, and deeper saddle, I did not like notching over that as much. And it would have actually been better to have them smaller. It has to go exactly where I strived it to. So I took the mallet and beat the hell out of it. And it leaves some bruising where the wood is hung up here. So I'll just take my, so I'll take my little grinder and uh, knock some of that off and get it to sit exactly where I want it. I may be just like a sixteenth of an inch above my line. That'll slide no problem. Don't ever mind the top of my notch. Like we make it weak so that when it comes down, it's gonna, it's, it, it'll break. It, it doesn't matter. Like it's designed to crush. So you can see I overcut it here in my rough notch. Put another log over top of this one. It covers that, eh? But this is, this is what's important. Good and strong, beautiful uh, scribe fit. I haven't got her perfect yet, you know. Especially with these ones, they got so much going on on them. You know, I ain't perfect yet, but I am pretty damn fucking good. Like you can see here, uh, some uh, I it broke off a touch here. You know, like not super super ideal. Well, she's looking deadly there now, isn't she, friends? Yeah, she really is. So, friends, never have I been more glad to be done something as I am these bottom sill logs and get a video out here. I've been ahead you guys waiting so damn long. And sometimes that happens before in the past and I was like oh, doing other things. I've been on this like the whole time. <laughs> it's been nuts. Like I've been a couple of weeks out here work on this. I, a lot of things are really slow. I'm just learning for the first time. I'm already getting so much quicker. A lot of the things I had to figure out, the head scratching, the, the calculations for it, everything. And in this time frame since the last video, we've done the whole design on the house. Like I didn't have the design done when I was cutting the logs. The final plans are done. So much friends and I can't be happier than when I'm looking here at this beauty. It's a serious house too. Like I really bit off a big project. It's 1200 square feet. Like those are 46 foot long logs. They got three corners. It isn't the simplest thing. Plus we're doing a full basement and it's got a half log. Now, when I've been talking a lot of my videos, I think everyone's just expecting me to kind of do what everybody else does on YouTube. Like there's a lot of little log cabin builds which are deadly, you know, but this is like, I'm building a home. Like I'm not trying to build a, a, a cabin, you know, like I'm trying to set her up pretty mint. And there is nothing I'd rather be doing than like out here scribing logs, working with timber, working with chainsaws. There's some days out here, it's tough as hell. Like there was a few days out here, I'm out here 11, 12 hours. I go home, it feels like I haven't got anything done because I get stuck on things. But there's days like today where it's so down deadly and you just get to look at this thing and you say, wow. One of the things I really lost a lot of time with here, to be honest with you, was leveling the stumps. Now, it's a lot about getting too picky. Like, if this is a quarter inch off in 42 feet, I probably shouldn't be fucking around all day shimming it. Like, it's gonna be okay. The problem is I got way too, way too picky at the wrong times, cause then I get so picky. And like, swinging this log around, you know, it's almost impossible to keep everything right on the shims and without bumping the stumps when there's no weight on the stumps yet. So I had a hell of a time and I'm so glad to be done that. You can see there's still some minor shimming. You can probably see like that one, it needs to come down a bit. But man, is it gonna be so much easier to set logs now? Like we're really working through the toughest shit. Now we're really gonna be flying. I got the logs ready to go to scribe in the next video, guys, it's gonna be deadly. But you see there like, before I get pissing around in perfect level, I should maybe get that log rough notch and the saddles marked and swing some shit around. And then when I'm ready for final scribe, just check it, you know, if it's got to come down an eighth, perfect time to do it. I'm just looking at this thing, like trees are so, these big, beautiful spruce trees, they're just so majestic. Like you look at these big, beautiful corners, man. It's something, it's like, 
I feel so fulfilled, you know, like a guy feels like he's really doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing, having the most fun, doing something that's so important to me, like, it's deadly. This is always my whole life I've wanted this. It's been my uh, favorite kind of house, that's why I'm doing it. The fact that I can get the trees for free sure helps. I'm rambling. Anyway guys, I can't wait to get this out to you. I really hope you enjoy it. I can't wait to start getting more videos out. You know, I had said that I wasn't gonna put this video out until this thing was started and show, like make it a real deadly one. Now we'll get some more in the action stuff and show you a little more as we go on here. We can make more videos. Now friends, I feel like it's in all transparency for me to come on here and tell you about something that happened with the merch. Uh, I, uh, and to make sure everybody that was affected knew what was going on. I had a, I had a little bit of an issue there. Uh, my inventory was supposed to sync with the store. It come out of sync and I oversold a couple of items. I had a few orders that were affected uh, by over uh, overselling, which is just horrible. Like it was supposed to be set up to automatically sync and never to happen. So hopefully it's been, the changes have been made so it will never happen again. Uh, and it took me longer than I wanted to, to realize that this has happened. So then once I had realized what would happen, why it had happened, everything, and I don't have the inventory, all the money has been refunded on the affected orders. Luckily there was only a couple and not a whole bunch. I refund you all the money, I sent you an email too, and I just want to make sure that everybody knows if they haven't got stuff from me, the few people that did, the money has been sent back in full and uh, I'm sorry for the trouble shit. I did not want that to happen, but hopefully now it will be A1. Most of the orders were totally good, but kind of pissed me off a few buggered up. Guys, I can't wait to share this with you. Fuck, it's gonna be deadly. It's gonna be so deadly. Till the next one, guys.